Okay, welcome to part six. We are finally going to talk about 3D animation in Photoshop. This is something really cool that's been added and it adds a whole new dimension literally to your work. And you can make great web comics, you can make uh, comic book trailers now. So I'm going to walk you through it. Hopefully you've seen the other portions, the other tutorials that I've done, and hopefully you've got a decent understanding of Photoshop. But if you already know Photoshop, you can start making animations very quickly. You don't have to learn Illustrator, you don't have to learn After Effects. You can start making uh, awesome animations for your comic books or for anything else very quickly. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my Smart Object back, turn, turn it back into a regular object, which you uh, do that by going rasterized layer. Okay, Rasterized just means to pixelate this is no longer a smart object, now it's just a regular object. So the other thing that I can do is I can animate 3D. So I've got a layer like this. It's on a transparent background. I can go to 3D and I can make a 3D postcard. I can make a 3D extrusion. Okay, 3D postcard is like one pixel thick or something. 3D extrusion can be any number of pixels thick. So I'm going to hit create and it's going to turn my layer into a 3D object that you can animate, which is really cool. Now, if I go down here to Alethea, see the little star with some shape to it, some, uh, some depth? Well, that's going to let me change the depth. So right now, Alethea is 776 pixels deep. That's a little bit, uh, it's a little too much. So I'm going to Get rid of that and make her like you know, 100 pixels deep, 87 pixels deep. I can also give some form to the extrusion. So let's go back, make her 87 pixels deep. And so 3D Alethea. Now, by default, your 3D object gets 10 seconds of animation. I don't know why. I'm going to make it 5. This is going to end your project right here. And every layer has an amount of time that it exists, so I'm going to make her the same as the project length just to save memory. So the background is also 5 seconds long. Here's a weird thing. If I take the playhead and put it here, at the end of our project, and I make a new layer, that new layer starts at the playhead. So you've been warned. That means that it will not exist until I drag it uh, into the playable area. So when creating new layers, put your playhead at the beginning unless you want it to start over there. All right, so let's animate Alethea. Now I click and open up Alethea's layer, and now that she's 3D, I have position, opacity, style, 3D scene position, 3D camera position, 3D render sending. Wow, I've got a lot of stuff. Lights, materials, you can animate all that stuff. Cast shadows, I usually get rid of. Okay, the shadow back there disappeared. I don't know if you saw it. It's there, now it's gone. Okay. I usually don't want the shadow on the background of my picture. Okay, catch shadows, it's going to depend on if you have lights in the scene. I usually click that off too. The scene is easy. 3D scene position. Okay, so instead of on layers, you go to 3D, and you have current view, you have the object itself, you have scene. If you want to animate the scene position, you've got to be clicked on scene. A lot of times I make this mistake where I'm clicked on the object itself, and I'm trying to animate, and it's not working. So you clicked on scene, you clicked on 3D scene position stopwatch, and the yellow ball comes up. Okay. Now, after by the time I get to three seconds, I want her to be turned and closer to us. So up here, I use the rotate tool and I rotate her. I can also swivel. This 
simply moves you along this axis up and down, and this will move you closer. Okay, so we're gonna have her like jumping towards us. The next one. So let's see what the animation looks like. I'm gonna click off of this little pointer guy, this selector, because that's what activates your 3D. If you're in your paintbrush, you don't get any 3D tools. Okay, if you're in a pen tool, smudge tool, you don't get any 3D tools. You only get them when you're clicked on this. So as soon as you click off, all that stuff disappears. And we can look at what we've made. And here, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. Okay, I'm going to hit play. Now you can see that my computer is really chugging at the 3D. It's not going smoothly like it did before. Okay, 3D animation takes up a lot of memory, and it is chugging away at it. This blue line says that it's stored it in memory though, so once it has rendered it, I can go back and, and very easily see what it looks like. It's still a layer, so you can make a mask and uh, and have it you know pop out from behind a mask. You can still add drop shadow, you can add an outer glow stroke, you know, anything that you can do with a regular layer can do with a 3D layer. So let's say at four seconds I want to move her again. So I click the pointer. Uh, I make sure that I'm on scene. See I wasn't on scene, I was on the layer. So make sure I'm on scene. Uh, I'm gonna move her to the side and I'm gonna rotate her back. Okay. I got a new ball here. I'm going to click off of the pointer so I can see clearly what's going on. And let me just hit the space bar and see what this animation looks like. And it's chugging, chugging, chugging. Hits that point, and then it moves over. Thanks again for watching, and remember to click like or leave comments if you want me to do more videos and tutorials.